yeah, no problem. There we are. Oh my god, it's really you. Hello. It is really me. True story. Yeah, yeah. I just no, no, because it's a bit uh, strange. I thought you were like a famous guy that won't answer, but uh, you really answered me. So I'm, no, 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 I'm no. Glad no. Please, here. again, I don't want to be famous. I want to be right. And uh, mm -hmm. if I mean, if celebrity stuff comes along the way, hey, great, fantastic. Uh, I haven't asked for any of it, so I'm just kind of rolling with it. Me, I'm just a guy. Okay, no, <laughs> thank you, thank you for your time. So oh, yeah. I want to just uh, like, can I check one minute if the video is recording right? Sure. So okay, just a moment, like because if it doesn't record the audio, it's a bit strange. So I'll I've got the I got the audio recording on my side anyway. Ah, also okay perfect so, no okay so meanwhile I'll just inform you because I'm uh, like I have a little a really little channel so like with uh, 200 subscribers but I like really I really like creating videos for YouTube so sure. I thought about doing a video about the flat earth because like I don't believe in it and I wanted to do a video pro and a video con so you, uh, how do you explain it in English like uh, a video uh, with uh, the proofs of the flat earth right. and the video of the proofs with of the globe sure. so just to compare also because okay i'll explain it because uh, so i'm my name is ivan sokolov i'm from russia uh, but actually i live in switzerland because uh, my parents moved uh, here when i was like uh, five so uh, i speak italian because i live in swiss like in the italian part of switzerland because switzerland is divided in like four regions of languages it's like uh a big <laughs> yeah 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 it's a big hodgepodge kind of, kind of like america america's got a bunch yeah. of different places where different languages kick in yeah yeah so like it's interesting and like this so yeah now i'm, I'm 17 and i study at, at the like like a, let's let's say a, a high school yes right now so cool yeah, like this awesome so and you're i i i don't know you really well because i've seen just your youtube account a bit of your documentary right your documentary on netflix you you've yeah. done one so so yeah i've seen this but you haven't any like you never spoke about your life so you're just like uh who, who you are oh yeah the, sure the sure from, so. I, you can ask me anything you want i'm i'm pretty much an oh, open okay. open book um so just like i mean i test if the audio is working and then uh, we'll go back speaking sorry okay <laughs> I just, that's fine I speak with you okay so just one moment. Um. <laughs> oh my god, I don't know why, but it just records uh, your voice, but not mine. So, but it's not that's okay. Really I will send you. I'm recording both, so oh, okay. I will. Uh, I will thank send. You so much. I will send you the raw audio file as soon as I'm done. I'll drop it into Skype, and and you'll have it. Okay. Thank you, Mark. So, yeah. Okay. Done this. So done this a few times. Start? It's okay. <laughs> okay. No, thank you. Yeah. So oh, yeah, you can if you want to. Like tell me your life, how how did you get here? How did you uh, like come to this flat earth theory? Because uh, you just uh, you like you you read about it, right, or something like this. You I initially you I initially okay. So do you want to know about the flat earth stuff or just first or do you oh, want? I, how do you want like because okay, if so you want to tell your video before uh, like your life before and after be before i got into flat earth i was just some guy that used to teach proprietary software to people all around the country in the united states mm -hmm. that's what i did i started i started out um i, I started out actually as a sous chef for a restaurant and mm. back in for a mediterranean restaurant back in seattle on the west coast and just about that time I won this computer pinball tournament and the company that was out in Colorado if you've ever heard of it uh, they wanted to hire me and so I had a choice it's either okay I would eventually manage this restaurant or I would play video games for a living <laughs> and it's and honestly it was a tough call because I'd loved cooking uh, I, I loved doing the whole restaurant thing I thought it was a lot of fun great people to hang out with every day was was different and uh it was fun, and but I chose the video game option, and so I played video games for a while, for, professionally, and this was back when nobody played professionally. That was and there were no teams. I mean, heck, the internet was barely, barely moving. Um, and then I taught proprietary software, and during that I got into different conspiracies, but just casually. 
because they were on the internet, you know, you know stuff yeah, yeah, stuff like 9-11 and so. JFK and the moon landings. And then uh, in 2014, I got into this, uh, which was I looked into Flat Earth just because I, th I thought I'd pretty much seen it all, and I had. And everybody, again, everybody knows about Flat Earth. Everybody hates Flat Earth. Nobody goes and thinks it's the greatest thing ever. Everyone just, oh, it's terrible. I don't want to look at this. And I thought, okay, well, at least I can say that I looked at it. and I, But I should be able to disprove it in a weekend. And the exact opposite happened where I just kept month after month. I was working on this thing going, okay, why can't I prove it's a globe anymore in a court of law? Why can't I do it? Until finally, the beginning of 2015, I just gave up. I threw up my hands and I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a series of videos. I'm going to put do it from the flat earth point of view. And put it out to the internet and say, okay, internet hive mind, you're really intelligent. You know, the, the group as a whole, the internet is very, very smart. And I said, you should be able to, to help me figure this thing out one way or the other. And what I thought was going to happen did not happen, which was I thought some academics would call me up and say, okay, you're wrong because of this, this, and this. And you could shut down your YouTube channel and go home and that, that's it. And it'd be great, fantastic. And to this day, I still wish that would happen. But the opposite happened, where people were calling me almost immediately saying, wow, this is really something. And then people wanted to interview me, and then subject matter experts from the military and pilots and engineers and all these guys start coming to me going, you know what? You may be onto something here. And yeah. I'm going, what? That can't be possible. I thought, it, you know, it's not real, is it? I mean, this is a theory, right? It, it can't be actually real, but like all good science fiction plot twists, uh, the, for, for me, that's what it is. It's a hundred percent where, where I thought it would be. So, um, that was basically it. And that was four years ago. And now here I am, we're, we're talking and yeah. I've lost count of how many interviews I've done. We, the conferences get bigger and more frequent every year. Uh, we even have a conference heading. Eh, it's pretty close. It's in the, uh, Netherlands this year. Uh, Amsterdam, as a matter of fact. Amsterdam is going to be a yeah. conference there in, in this uh, fall. And uh, yeah, so there we go. That's that's how I got from there to here. I mean, a lot has happened between then, you know, in those last four years, but that's the, the gist of it. Yeah, like the, the main... Let's the, say the, the main, main yeah, the main one. point, yeah. So, uh, just advice, because if I look at you, like in your eyes, I just don't look in the camera. So maybe you're like... See the, the, the trick the, no it's okay it's, it's perfectly fine the trick is what i do because i have a big monitor i take the the image and i put it right next to the camera so your hairline uh, yeah, so. your hair is right below the camera and this kind of shows you how far away that camera is it's pretty it's far from maybe i'm going to do this also now yeah no yeah, worries no, but no, no big deal interesting history yeah like, interesting story because no no it's it's amazing like how how you got this amount didn't, of people coming to you and just... Yeah, didn't want to do it. I mean, everything was unsolicited. Every single thing. Uh, every person that called me, every interview. I didn't have to reach out to I didn't have to pick up a finger. People just started coming to me. Now, part of it, I, I made it easy for them because of my real name and my phone number out there. So, yeah. I mean, like I was easy to track down. If you want to do a quick flat earth interview, there was nobody you could get a hold of faster and I'm not going to say that the media is necessarily lazy, but they can be from time to time. Yeah, they, it's like, okay, do I spend an hour trying to find this guy or do I just call this guy right here? And because, you know, his numbers, his numbers right there. And if you do enough, a, a few interviews and you sound okay during the, during the interviews, they're going to call you anyway. It's like, oh, okay, yeah. he seems good enough. Well, let's, let's just go with him. They, they like the safe option, which is why like Bill Nye, the science guy over here get so many interviews because he's safe on camera mm -hmm. oh, yeah that's that's it that's it yeah, yeah. <laughs> so oh, uh, that's interesting story so uh but what are you working on right now that's not part like because i wanted to ask you some other questions but uh, as we we're talking that's it's nice to talk so i'm sure. just what, am, what am i working on currently yeah, yeah, what you're working on. Uh, getting ready for the next conference, which is happening in a month. And in, in fact, less than a month yeah, down in um, Auckland, New Zealand. I know. Oh. Yeah, so New Zealand's the next conference. And then once I get back from that, uh, I've got two weeks. Then I go to Calgary up in Canada. Then the summer is going to be spent with documentary people, more documentary people. 
and then in September, the UK conference and also the Mount Shasta conference and possibly the Amsterdam conference. Those are all three in September. And then the Dallas, the big US conferences in November. Other projects, I mean, I'm just at this point, I'm just trying to get the word out as fast as possible. I mean, you're you're the end of I, I've done five interviews in two days and uh, I'll you know, so that, that's what I'm doing mostly right now is just talking to people okay okay, okay. so just a lot of people wants to talk to you because yeah. talk to you because you're, you know some things uh, and so that and the netflix yeah. doc, the netflix thing really was bigger than i thought it would be it would we'd already uh we'd already seen it get released in amazon and itunes and youtube yeah. but yeah. when it hit netflix a few weeks ago i i did not realize that so many people had netflix that I, it was my my email load doubled and then all these people started contacting me because of the documentary yeah. it's like even also though the documentary because, was not meant to be in our favor at hmm. all uh they the, the the director of that documentary hated yeah Flatter. that's true yeah yeah no because you, i also I, I saw a part not, not the whole but i think that the, the first 30 minutes yeah and yeah it's against the flutter but, oh uh, you, do you wait the, the back part of it it's even worse yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, okay. So he maybe and I'll he did continue. it for the same. He the reason why the director didn't like it is for the reason you're talking to me, which is mm -hmm. you're young by comparison. And there was a, mm -hmm. a part towards the end of that movie where at the conference a 12 year old kid came up and was asking me questions on the microphone when I was up on the on the podium, and they thought that the producers of the show thought that they had the responsibility to protect the children. Uh, uh, ah, yeah. What? I go, what? Where's this coming from exactly? It's like, one, we're not recruiting children, and what? Because there's an age requirement for Flat Earth? Yeah, get out of here. I don't want to hear that. Oh, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, you say. You're right. Mm. Also, no, also because Netflix, like, because m mostly you're watched by, like, Americans and uh, people who speak English. Yes. But Netflix also, like, is a. Like we here in Switzerland also have Netflix, so yeah. maybe other people in Europe and also I don't know in Russia and China also. No, in China, no, but but like mostly can watch your. Oh yeah, your yeah, Netflix. it's everywhere. So it's really... I mean, yesterday I did um, a morning show, the Today Show in Australia, mm -hmm. and we we Whoa. fed we fed it from Seattle, and they did it because of the documentary. So mm -hmm. yeah, it's it's everywhere. At this point, you know, but you, it's great that you did it. So yeah, no, no, I'm not going to regret it. It's it's a great recruiting tool for us. It is a Trojan horse, in yeah. that uh, it makes people safe going in to watch it. But at the end, there's a lot of questions, and we saw that mm -hmm. every film festival. You know, the the documentary did pretty well at the film festival before it was before it was bought. We did 22 film festivals in seven countries, which is pretty good considering there yes. was not a lot of money spent on it. It was a it was a bare bones production. Yeah, so. you can see that's uh, like a, a simple product, but well done. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. that's true. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if you want, we can go to the questions. Like sure, first. what you got? Least, Throw them at me. It's not. It's just uh, like not like pointy questions like ballads, but something like a more open, so sure. we can talk a little bit. Okay, so like I've got. Some things because I want to know what will you answer to me if I ask you these questions. So I'll begin with this because uh, I'm a rower, so I do rowing. Okay. I don't know if you know the sport. So I, I do know America rowing. I do know rowing. Okay, okay, because in America it's popular, but here it's not. It's not at all popular. So yeah. no one it's, knows. It's more rowing. popular on the east coast of the United States than the west coast. But yeah, yeah, I know. But I, you know, I, I know rowing. Okay. Yeah. So okay, uh, just imagine like I'm. On my boat, right. and I'm rowing, and rowing. Right. And at the end, uh, so at, at the begin, uh, like let's say close to the to the edge of yeah. the lake, I see really good the building, so the basement of the building of our boathouse. Sure. So I see like everything. And as I come, as I go, because you know we we row to that uh, like direction, so we we go backwards. Right. As I row, like maybe. A kilometer, a kilometer and a half. Yeah, I no longer see our basement, so right. I just see like the top of the building, but not the primary part. Right. So how is this possible if the Earth isn't flat? Uh, isn't uh, isn't, isn't curved? Isn't no, no, no. It's good. Yeah, yeah. It's good. No, and and it is a very, very common question, which is, uh, you think you are seeing evidence of curvature? 
my argument would be first off if you got to the other side of wherever you were rowing to is to grab some sort of digital camera and by the way uh i would have been with you absolutely 10 years ago that's a great argument in fact most people if you take the space agencies out of the equation if you say can you prove to me that there's curvature of the earth without using nasa you know without mm -hmm. using something from the military and almost the first thing out of anyone's mouth is oh we see boats going over the horizon or in your case you're on the boat nice. and you see the building that you left and you see the buildings you suppose you know shrinking from the bottom up yeah. is what you think yeah. uh first thing i would have you do is uh take an, so any sort of hd camera and zoom in and don't do it on just the day that you were doing that that you were rowing but do it in varying weather conditions to see if you see a difference because there's something out out there and we didn't make this up called atmospheric lensing you've ever heard of that term Kind Never of okay. So. so what we're breathing in, right? What what we're, oh, okay. what we're breathing in this thing between me and you, we call it air, right? Yeah. But it's it's not, and most people think, oh, it's made up of oxygen. That's all, we're, and it's like, no, 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 it's only one fifth oxygen. It's it's actually four <laughs> parts nitrogen. It's eighty percent nitrogen. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. So, 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 like in English, it's a bit hard. So like just some terms, but that's no okay. Problem. That's yeah, okay. I understood what you mean. Yeah. So it's it's we're basically breathing in a thin version of water. And water yeah. acts like a lens, like anything else. If you have any doubt, uh, take a, a straw and put it in um, a straight straw and, and put yeah. it in a, in a glass of water. Like, yeah, you'll, if, you'll see it yeah. bend. Same thing happens with the air. And that is when you are looking, the farther, farther you are looking away from something, the more atmosphere you're looking through. And not only does it become a magnifying in effect, but it also starts losing transparency. So like what you're breathing in right now is only about 99.9% .9 transparent. And as you get more in, you know, as you get further and further distance away, it becomes 80 and 70 and 60, which is why you can't see things, you know, 500 miles away because there's just too much atmosphere between you, there, them and you. But as far as anything dissipating from the ground up, first thing I would say is look at it through an HD lens, crank up the, the, the zoom and tell me if it still looks like what you saw just with your own eyes. And test it in varying conditions because we have seen objects. That, in fact, that was one of the first tests that we ever did, which was you see a boat. We usually do it from the other side, meaning somebody, you've seen the test where somebody's on the beach and a boat goes off in the distance. Like you're, if you're yeah. rowing, you're going off to the distance. And eventually you get smaller and smaller and smaller, then you disappear. I mean, you mm -hmm. won't be, but remember, because the rowing, you know, the, your crew boat is not very high off the water at all. Yeah. yeah. In fact, it's yeah, only it's really, the yeah, highest cool, part is yeah. just you. And so eventually <laughs> yeah. you, you don't even have to get very far at all and that you disappear, right? So are you gone over the other side of the curve, right? Well, you're not because now I could, I can, in fact, I let you go off into the distance. I can crank up the zoom and I can bring you back into frame after you're already gone. I can't see you with my naked eye, but now I can see you with the camera. In fact, I can let you go off again. I can crank up the zoom again and bring you back in. Well, there's a problem there. And that is eventually... If you believe in the curvature, you should be behind the curve. Little play on the documentary. Uh, you should be on the other side of the hill. And if you're on the other side of the hill, there's nothing I can do, should not be anything I can do to bring you back into frame. And we can always bring you back into frame. Uh, in fact, the, the thing I, I put a challenge out to science, I go, find me an object uh, less than, I don't know, 100, 150 miles away that you can never see. No matter what, because it should be on the other side of the curve and no one's ever done it. We've always been able to see vast, vast distances. And in fact, if you get up in a plane, the latest test we've done, sorry, not to drag this out. Latest test we've done when we're up in an airplane, where, where the, remember the, the atmosphere is much thinner. We can, yeah. and we crank the zoom up there with like an infrared filter. We can see distances that are ridiculously far away, hundreds and hundreds yeah. of miles away. And it shouldn't, and it shouldn't be there. Anyway, sorry, that's my quick answer, which isn't so good. Mm -hmm. No, no, but it's not, it's not a problem. <laughs> you can ask for as, as long as you want. So it's, right. I don't know how much time have you got? Uh, I'll, I'll just work with you. Don't worry about it. I, I don't have oh, anything until later tonight anyway. Okay. So, but what about like if I, maybe in Chicago, I know, yeah, there is a really big like lagoon lake. or what's it called, like, like lake or what is this? Yeah. And from one side to the other one, you can't see the city even with a camera. How is this possible? Oh, you absolutely can see it. In fact, I've got you... I've got video on my machine. Not only, in fact, that was one of the first ones that people grabbed because not only was there still shots taken, mm -hmm. and and yeah. the meteorologists, the weathermen on our side, were saying, "Well, it's a mirage. You're looking at a mirage." And I'm going, 
yeah, that's fine and all for a still shot, but we have time lapse of that same Chicago skyline footage, which is about 50 miles away. Roughly, I don't know what that is in kilometers. It's a little bit longer. Yes, 70, 70 yeah. 80 kilometers. But, yeah, but I understand it. Yeah, but 50 miles away, I've seen, I've watched, personally watched, I've got it on my machine, I'll send it to you. Uh, 12 hour time lapse where oh. you, you're looking at the, you're looking at the Chicago skyline and from morning, literally from sunrise to sunset, and there's weather going through, there's clouds, there's rain, and it goes into nighttime, and it never wavers. It's not a superior mirage. It's not an inferior mm -hmm. mirage. It's the okay. real thing. Not only that, I'll, I'll, I'll take it a step further, which is I've got military yeah. guys, one of my first guys that ever came to me, uh, a Navy missile instructor for the Sparrow Missile System. And he says, look, we're targeting boats at 50 nautical miles away, which don't stand that high off the water with a, a, a two degree beam radar, it's point to point. We're not bouncing off the stratosphere, we're going point to point. He goes, not only are we targeting them, we're hitting them. He goes, we well, can't hit mirages with missiles. You yeah, can, it cannot be done. And at nighttime, we can see them with infrared. He wouldn't give me the classified distances, but he goes, there's no way. He goes, at that distance, they are on the other side of the hill. And he goes, they should not be able. And he goes, all military guys that are firing long distances know this. So there you mm -hmm. go. And then that's a little one, yes. Also, because if you know, like, there is a really high building in Abu Dhabi or how it's called. Yeah, you know, the, the highest building ever. Or also the, the Eiffel Tower. Why can't we see them? Like if From a very, very long flat. distance away? Yeah, also with, a, <laughs> also with a camera. Why can't I, like, point it, I don't know, like, in this direction, if I know that the Eiffel Tower is right there. Right. And I can see it. Okay, why, why don't... The, that's that's a good argument. They, most people don't use the Eiffel Tower or the the one in Dubai. They usually use like Mount Everest. Mount Everest is, oh, yeah, is, Mount Everest, Mount Everest yeah. is a perfect example. That's the tallest thing in the world, right? Why can't you yeah. see Mount Everest from everywhere? If mm -hmm. if that's the case, most of the time it's because of the atmosphere itself. Meaning the atmosphere mm -hmm. is so thick. Think about when you're underwater. If you ever watch underwater films. Like when you're yeah. looking at whales, whales can only get about 400 yards away before even they get just obscured because the water's so thick. Yes. The atmosphere yeah. is thinner than that, but it's still thick. And my argument would be, even though you, you won't be able to prove it in any way, shape, or form, I think it's just how this place was designed, that if you took the atmosphere away, yeah, you probably could see distances that are ridiculously far. People say, like, why can't you see Japan from California? Or why can't you see Europe from New York? And I, my argument would be, if you could make it a vacuum, if you remove the atmosphere, I think you actually probably could see Europe from New York. It's just yeah. a question of uh, distance at that point, which is just, again, the only thing, I think it's part of how this place was built, meaning the atmosphere is meant to obscure and make things tougher to see at range. That way it's just out of your, you don't think about it anymore. Because it, since we have a very limited distance of how we can see, you know, when you're just walking around, yeah, yeah, yeah. nobody thinks know. about they, they because if you did, you if you could see something that was 500 miles away, a tall thing that was really 500 miles away, eventually some of you are like some some nerd, some geek could be like, you know, you shouldn't be able to see that because you know because the, the curvature of the Earth factors in if it's eight inches per mile squared. It's a great. I think it was just part of how this place was designed. Okay, because you think that like we. We are running in a simulation or something like this, or how can... If that's a whole nother thing. If it's a simulation, then yeah, you also do the same thing. We do, we actually create atmospheric, in fact, the, the game that I never ever stopped playing, Warcraft, with, there's actually something in there that you, you have access to some of those controls. And yeah. one of the, those controls is viewing distance, where it creates a simulated atmosphere so that you don't see objects that are really, really far away. Now, part of that is so that you get better performance because if you see stuff that's only close up, they don't have to render the stuff that's very, very far. And so you get, you know, but it's in there. And that is, you know, it's a fake atmosphere. Okay. Yeah. Could work. But the fact that is, you can't prove it with science or... Because if you don't believe in science, you can't prove it. Oh, no, 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 no. It's, I believe in or... science. No, no, no. Don't, don't get me wrong okay. here. I... I absolutely oh, okay. believe in science okay. uh, and the scientific method, you know, uh, mm -hmm. test, observe, repeat. It's not that hard. Uh, yeah. Where I fall, where I fall short is when science jumps the rails and becomes scientism. When science becomes its own religion and puts its stamps on things that aren't fact. When they take their best educated guess and then they take the word guess out of it. 
So again, if you want to tell me what the boiling temperature of water is, that's fine. You know, at sea level, because, you know, it, it actually gets less as you get higher up in the altitude, you know, like where you are. Yeah. Uh, that's one thing. But you want to tell me what the core of the earth looks like? No, 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 no. Sorry, the core of the earth is 4,000 miles away if you're mainstream science. The deepest hole ever drilled is 8 miles, 12 kilometers. Yeah, so right. that's nothing. That's a barely a fraction of 1%. And yet you're telling us, you know, you've all seen the cross sections of what the earth looks like. You know, it goes from red to orange yeah. to yellow to white. And the so, geography lesson, yes. So why, why are you telling me this? How, how are you telling me this? It's like, well, it's because we're science. And now in the, in the fine print, they will let themselves off the hook and they'll say, well, we don't really know what's down there. We're basically, we're guessing off of what happens with volcanoes. And it's like, yeah, but, but that fine print is buried so deeply that, you know, most kids don't know this you know you're shown this when you're nine years old you're shown this as you graduate from university at that point you're ready to defend this idea it's like well how do you know it's like well i have this this artist rendering that's all you got come on so sorry yeah. and and that's just and that's just the core of the earth not to mention things like i don't know carbon dating evolution the big bang theory how about dark matter they've been working on dark matter for some time now and, and, uh, and no, dark matter, yes. it's, it's a bit abstract like as a, oh it's abstract as a now but probably in five years now they're five near five years from now they're gonna say oh no dark matter is absolutely a fact what <laughs> sorry sorry science oh, okay. science goes too far and oh, okay. that's one of my things i still love science but i mean there's the reason we're talking but mm -hmm. at the same time, they go too far, like a lot of things. Okay, but I could answer you like this way, because the last year at the geography classes, yeah, we studied like this uh, geological things and what comes about the volcanoes and all this kind of stuff. Right. Also with the tectonical thing. I don't know how it is. Tectonic in plates. Yeah. Yeah, tectonic plates and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. So. No, it's, it makes a lot of sense because with the, I don't know if you know the, on the, on the map we have the, the most deep part of the ocean. Mariana's near Trench. To the, yeah. yeah, to the islands. So like it's, this theory is proven by some facts. Yeah, because we know, we know that the deepest part is near to the twin islands. So the fact that one plate is going down to the other one. Sure. It now creates some island and also a deep part, so sure. it has some sense. But to really prove it, you have to study this like for ten years long. So yeah, maybe you're right because like I don't know, I haven't studied it yet. So well, again, I science prove it. science does some wonderful things, but science is corruptible like any anything else. Don't don't one of the the most arrogant things I've ever heard from Neil deGrasse Tyson, who's currently the the most prominent face of science out there he says science is right whether or not you believe in it mm -hmm. and i thought okay it's that might be a little much because what you're saying there is whatever science comes up with whatever I, that is absolutely fact because they're smarter than you they've got more education than you and 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 it's like come on don't tell me that science can't be wrong science makes mistakes all the time in fact science will make deliberate mistakes uh, for money and they've done it and over the I mean not not as much probably in your neck of the woods but the United States you know look scientists need Porsches too and yeah, they, they will do they will cut corners when it comes to money or grants or keeping their institution going and science mm -hmm. protects their own which is why the globe is a very important thing to them they're not gonna let it go anytime soon because if all of a sudden it was revealed that, oh yeah, by the way, you're not on a globe anymore. Science is in real trouble. Uh, and not necessarily just from the religious houses. They're in trouble from an academic standpoint, from an economic standpoint. Anyway, sorry, I ramble. Go on. What else? You no, got? no, but, oh, okay. No, but just also a little bit of argumentation about this science thing. Yeah. Because like now I'm studying physics and mathematics at my high school. It's my specialization. Yeah. So maybe in the future I'm going to study engineering like with mechanism with like how to be mechanical, mechanical engineering engineer, yeah mechanical engineering or electronical engineering so something about like this rocket kind of stuff or like yeah the, because i like also this like space sure. things so what what if i like graduate and then we talk again and i've studied a lot of calculus a lot of theories and i'll also prove it on my own some things and i can prove it with you because we can do something 
together. I can experiment. I can show you. Sure. And we can do something together. What will you answer me like if I? Uh, if the I short this? version is math will not save you, unfortunately. And that sounds. And that's not trying to be derogatory in any way. But imagine this, because because lots of people that are in the academic world will try to attack flat Earth with math. Mm -hmm. And what I try to tell them is this, look, when we started out doing this, we noticed that nobody, I mean, 99% of the people out there didn't even understand what the curvature formula was. So when I went to people and I would say, okay, the curvature of the earth, according to mainstream science is eight inches per mile. And they'd be like, I'm totally with you. I'm totally with you. I go squared. Mm -hmm. And they, their eyes would just glaze over and they, they, they forgot everything they ever learned about algebra in high school ever, right? And I'm going, it's eight inches per mile per mile. And they're still just staring at me. I'm going, okay, so if it's three miles, it's three times three, times, which is nine times eight is 72. And they're going, and? And I'm going, and? <laughs> they, they did not get this. And so, and, yeah. that's, and that's algebra, right? And it's not even very hard algebra. So if when science tries to come at me or come at anybody with, I don't know, geometry and trig and calculus and quantum mechanics or whatever you want to bring up, you got to remember that you've already lost the audience that you've been trying to get. The audience doesn't know. The people on the street don't know geometry. They don't know yeah, trigonometry. They don't know. They definitely don't know calculus. And if you try to use that in the I, I, look, you can't you I, I, I'm, I'm trust me, I'm trying to help you here. Yeah, you yeah. can't use these tools anymore because the the general population does not know them. They don't want to know them. They don't have yeah, the mindset yeah, yeah. for them. Yeah. And so, and we've we've heard this. I mean, I've there's time and time again. Oh my god, the amount of people that brought up geometry and or calculus to me, and they I'm going look. You just you've got to make it more simple than that. The reason why flatter, okay, the, the, we'll give you, I'll give you some, I, probably not one of your questions, but I got to bring this up to you, which is yeah, the no reason, problem. the reason why flat earth has gotten so much traction over the last four years is because f the flat earth model is now easier to explain than, yeah, the, than, the, globe, than yeah. the globe, a lot easier. And by that, I mean, people are inherently lazy when it comes to their daily lives, which means if you give them an option that's easier in some senses, uh, even though they, 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 if it's, if it's, if it's something easy they can do and they can get, get their head around it, that's what they're going with. It, it, so again, the, the globe, try to explain the heliocentric model to somebody in under 60 minutes, try to explain the solar system model and how it's flying sideways, you know, at half a million miles an hour and try to throw in the null points of gravity and try to explain gravity to them. And, all these different things, whereas we just say, remember, because the globe can't just exist on its own. It needs a solar system and a galaxy around yeah. that and a universe around that. Whereas we say, no, no, the flat earth model, pff, yeah, it's right in the palm of your hand. That's all you need. Mm -hmm. uh, people ju will always go for the easy. It's the Sun Tzu art of war argument from that book that he wrote where he said people are like water. They will always take the path of least resistance. I'll end this part with, with this, which is think of, because you're young, so you've always known texting, right? Before there was texting, Everybody just picked up the phone and called each other for a hundred yeah. years. That's all anyone did. We just picked up the phone and called each other. And then texting made it less socially. Now, it was, it was still harder to do than picking up a phone. You just picked up the phone. You called somebody, right? Speed dial is one button. Texting, you're freaking breaking your thumbs on a regular yeah, basis yeah. trying to text. A lot of time there, yes. But it's socially less awkward than picking up the phone and talking to somebody, especially for guys. If you're asking girls out, right? It's like, oh, hey, would you like to go to the dance? LOL, smiley face, yeah, it's right? Really since, so, it's, yeah. since it's socially it's less awkward, people choose that option. Even though yeah. physically it was harder to do, it's socially, it's like less stress on your head. And so people did that. They, they took, after 100 years of talking on the phone, they abandoned it almost entirely. I know people, interns that worked for the companies that I was, I was in a couple years ago. And I go, when was the last time you actually made a phone call? She goes... I don't know, like months ago, you know, and I think it was like to her parents type yeah. type thing. Yeah. It was like, but kid to kid. No, kids don't call each other anymore. They always text. So, sorry. Yes. Yeah, right. There you go. No, but <clears throat> connecting to your like solar system and like flat earth system argumentation, I would say this, like first, why 
only the Earth is flat and everything around is globe is a globe or a sphere. Like because you you don't say that sure. uh, like Pla the other planets are also flat. So I've, I've... and also like uh, just to ask you another question. Um, because it's not like a question, but like a statement. Because your your model yeah. runs uh, like all around the the theory that we are all in a created world by someone else or by someone that is greater than us, yeah. uh, or like a simulation, like Elon Musk says. Sure. So the first thing is that, like when pointing, when talking about flat Earth, we are assuming that we are not. Who you, who we really are, or something like right. this. Like we are not who we think to we are. So like right. like this. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, okay. To the first part, which is there is sooner or later there's going art imitates life and life and imitates life. So yes, there is going to be part of this that is an illusion, no question. Which is why everyone I, I get this question quite a bit. Which is how why are why is everything up there a sphere and we're not a sphere. And I first thing I do is I come back and I say, "Who told you there was a sphere?" Exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, the scientists or the military? Take take your pick on this one. Uh, not to use a biblical reference, but if God created the uh, the sun and the moon, that's fine. It was NASA who told you how far away they were and what they you know exactly they were made out of, which is interesting mm -hmm. considering NASA's military. Um, mm -hmm. When you go to a planetarium, what do you see? You see a moon and stars and planets and everything's wonderful and, and spherical. And I yeah. and then you say, well, yeah, but we're in a building, you know, that doesn't count. It's like that's just an illusion we put on the ceiling. And I go, yeah, but that's our illusion. Imagine if we had the technology 100 years from now, what we could do or if there was an advanced technology. We're just talking about a bigger building. That's all we're talking mm -hmm. about here. A planetarium oh, is just a tiny building by comparison. And we consider it, you know, a technological marvel. If you were to take a planetarium that we build now and take it back 200 years ago in time, and show it to somebody, you could fool somebody easily, which is why the Truman Show, the, the movie from 1998, was yeah. so brilliant, which was, could you fool yeah. somebody? Absolutely you could. It's just a question of money and resources. I mean, that particular building was only 20 miles wide, maybe. And you mm -hmm. and, and the only reason he even found out because it was because you wrote it into the plot. He could have lived his entire life and never would have found out. It was like, oh, this fell. And no, they would have made it bulletproof. He never would have found out. But that's a boring movie. So they never they yeah. never would have shown that. So, and when it comes to what your statement at the end, yeah, the, by default, it is, in fact, not to say that Flat Earth would kill atheism, but it'd be pretty close. Because what you're talking about is the default state for any enclosed world, if we're in a building with walls and a floor and a ceiling, the default state is that it was built by someone bigger than us. Now, I'm mm -hmm. not going to be so arrogant as to say, well, it's God, right? But there are a lot of religious people in this world that absolutely would say it was God. And, yeah. but, and even if it wasn't, then you got a toss up. And that is either an advanced civilization that's way more powerful than us or God. Yeah. And that you, then you're just splitting hairs, which is, OK, one man's advanced technological advances is another man's deity. Uh, if a giant golden spaceship landed in Switzerland tomorrow, right, just to happen to land and the people that came out, they have to be better looking than us because if they weren't, then that would just ruin the whole image. But if they came out and were better looking than us, there would be new religions that would form like that, just overnight. Yeah, like by then, yes. Because and wouldn't matter, and 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 it's fine, even if they're not God. The questions would be, if you're not God, do you have God's phone number? That you know, because you're at least one step closer to God than we are. And yeah. you know, look, I mean, there's eight. Was it eighty percent of this world is tied to one of the main religious houses in some capacity? Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So anyway, that's that's my statement. And, and by the way, if you want to get, ever get into, I don't know, it, it, maybe later, maybe not today, uh, the Elon Musk virtual thing. He's not the only yeah. one. And by yeah, the way, screw, the screw Elon Musk. Elon Musk is a freaking chump. He is, he is one of the faces of science right now, and he yeah. is completely undeserving. Do you even know how he made his money? Uh, I have read his book, yeah. Uh, no, it's it's interesting, but it I don't know because I've only read a book. No, yeah. no, it's all right. He well, it, uh, it, it, he he's he a, worked hard. He was a, well, yeah, he too. did. He was a software developer that that yeah. helped develop PayPal. And as you know, PayPal yeah. is a pretty big thing. You know, it's it yeah. made, it, and he got the, he was part of the initial stock offering, 
and he got yeah. a big, well, not a big chunk, but pretty big. And you know, he became a billionaire almost instantly. And then he bought, yeah. like for example, he bought Tesla Motors. Right? Yeah, people no, think yeah. he invented Tesla. No, he just bought it. He bought it. Yeah. He bought yeah. it, and then he ended up buying a. Um, well, he he started SpaceX, but he doesn't know anything about space at all. I mean, yeah, fine. He put his his he put a car that he didn't even design supposedly into space, but that's a whole other thing for another time. So go yeah. ahead. Sorry, I I, I ramble. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, uh, do you know the one that uh, like? took a spirit level and took it on an airplane and then said that the earth is flat just by watching the spirit level. Oh, D Have Marble. This video? Yeah, Daryl Marble. Yeah, D Marble. Yeah, yeah, he, he actually lives not too far from here. We've met several times. Okay. Uh, so, I don't know, what do you think about this experiment with the spirit level? Because, the, like science, if, if the curvature of the earth, because it's not, uh, as you said also before, it's not this, it's not like this, yeah, it's not like really big in a small, like uh, space, but it's like really, really, really small curvature in a small place. I mean, right, yeah. right, right, right. So, like, the airplane doesn't fly like this, but it like goes like this, and then like a little bit corrects his way. And like, well, that's and so. So, what's my thought on that? That's interesting. You would mention that because you say it corrects a little bit every so often, right? Because if a plane is mm -hmm. flying really, really fast, it's going to have to adjust for curvature, and not every yeah. so often, it's going to have to adjust a lot. On a regular mm -hmm. basis, because otherwise it's going to just keep it's going to yeah, the elevation. Yeah, yeah. It's going to keep going higher and higher because it's and, and then take off. But of course, it wouldn't really uh, reach escape velocity anyway. And that is, but it's interesting because we never feel or see those corrections ever. Meaning, when, yeah. if you're in an airplane, and I know you probably haven't flown that much, but if you're in an airplane, when you get to cruising altitude, you are freaking tabletop flat forever for the entire cruising altitude part, unless you're like dodging turbulence or clouds or weather or anything like that. I mean, you are tabletop flat. It never, ever moves. And the question is, why doesn't it? Meaning it should, at the very least, it's got to adjust either one way or the other, which is you say either it's got to nose down every so often, or if gravity's pulling too hard, it's got to nose up every so often. But it's got to do this on a regular basis. And people are... Even though we're terrible at perspective in terms of motion, uh, like if you're in a car or a train and another train is going by you, you, you don't know for a second if that train's moving or your train's moving, that sort of thing. Yeah. We're bad at that, but we're really good at detecting motion. And yeah. nobody ever, ever feels that plane doing these little adjustments here and there. And it should be adjusting it on a regular basis, and it doesn't. In fact, we saw some raw flight data. Uh, in fact, I've, I don't know if I've still got this video lying around where they were showing planes because they, they can track them, you know, uh, the, the path of them, not only um, from the top down, but sideways. And when they got up to cruising altitude, it was like straight, almost straight up and then absolutely flat and then straight down. And when you looked at the map down below, which is even more interesting, I, 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 I know I've got this video on my channel somewhere. It's mm -hmm. absolutely, they used that the world below them was flat. And I was going, why would you straighten it out? I go, the raw data should be curved. Because it's a globe, right? So why did you have, why are you showing me raw data where the ground below across the entire United States, 3,000 plus miles, is absolutely flat? How, why are you showing me that? So, no, no. But D Marbles, the reason why D Marble got grief for it was because he used just a simple spirit level, which was just a, a nice little example. If you want a better example, we've done them. Uh, use the... All your phones, you can download an app that has the 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 level built yeah, in, a level, digital yeah. level on on all 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 pins, all corners. That's we've we've done that and and done it in varying capacities where you even shut it off, where we we set the level up on the plane just before it takes off and then kill the phone, pull the battery, and then kick it back in when you get to another part of the country, and then let it adjust and it always adjusts. You know, it says you know it was flat. Nothing's ever changed. Mm -hmm. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. Uh, like, <coughs> yeah, I just connect with another question. It's like really small. Why, if you like, because you you like you believe in it, yeah. and also a lot of people believe in it. And why don't you just like try to fly a plane? And oh my god, it's all right. I just open the door. So like, uh, one minute and they come. Like, excuse me. Okay, sure, <laughs> sure, sure, sure. Okay, I'm just really fast. Мама, я разговариваю, можно я, пожалуйста, можешь меня не беспокоить? Ладно, я разговариваю по телефону, можно я не беспокоить? 
Спасибо, не, за, не заходи. Okay, I'm sorry, Mark. No, 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 no worries at all. It's the moment that I put my head, headphones up, so... Okay. Not a problem. Yeah, sorry, because I just had to open the door because I'm, like, I was home alone right now. I'm not, but... <laughs> so, I think you were going to ask me why if we're all in here... Why yeah, doesn't why somebody just take a plane and, and, is, and go for yeah, it? Yeah, why, why don't you just take a plane and, like, go up there and, like, I don't know, make a footage or something like this. But also see that there is a curvature like this. And why don't you just try to we, do it on wait, your you, own? You don't, like think, to, you don't think we tried this? Oh, my God. Yeah, In fact, I, mean, uh, I, yeah. I have people all the time that will tell me. And they've told me this at every – I'm not kidding you. In, and you know who George Orwell is? Yeah. Okay, perfect. The um and you'll understand what I mean in a second. I've had people say they've seen the curve from from an airplane. I've had people say they've seen it from a mountaintop, from a balloon, and I've even had people, a lot of people say they can see it from the beach. Okay. There's a problem there because there's some people that all these people differ. Meaning there's people say I can't see it from the beach, I can see it from a balloon. I can't see it from a balloon, I can see it from a mountaintop. I can't see it from a mountaintop, I can see it from a plane. Even though Neil deGrasse Tyson comes out and says, no one can see the curvature anywhere. No, no civilian can see the curvature anywhere. He goes, you can't, a, a civilian can never get high enough to see the curvature. So, in fact, we, the like the Red Bull jump that was done a couple years ago, the Red Bull jump shows a yeah, massive the curvature. Here. The curvature is ridiculous. The curvature is so severe that basically the world would only be about 100 miles wide if the curvature was this bad. Even though I can send you weather balloon footage today right now uh that shows no curvature at all at 120,000 feet so if there's no curvature at all at 120,000 feet how can you see it from an airplane to why i put the challenge out there i said look if anyone sees the curvature take a picture of it i don't care where it is put it on your laptop hold a straight edge up to it tell me if the curvature is still there if it's still there you send me send me that pic i will quit flat earth tomorrow that was four years ago <laughs> And the yeah. reason you and a lot of other people, trust me, you're not alone here, has said, no, 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 yeah. the curvature, absolutely, you can see it from the airplane. It's not that you see the curvature, you want to see the curvature. You've been mm -hmm. told the curvature is here so much, which goes in the Orwell, four lights, five lights type thing. If you yeah. tell somebody, there was a, it was a great line, I love um, the old Star Trek Next Generation. He had this great line at the end, and he took this straight out of Orwell, which was the... Uh, um, there were four lights up there. They were, they were torturing him. And there were four lights. And they kept telling him there were five. And at the end, his quote was perfect. He, he says, he goes, the scary, when, when he was released, he goes, the scariest thing for me wasn't that, uh, uh, wasn't the torture. He goes, he goes, at the end, he goes, I saw five lights. Because mm -hmm. that was his mind, his defensive reaction to, because he was told this over and over. This is the truth. Five lights is the truth. Five lights is the truth. If you show somebody a globe, at six years old, and you show it to them again, you know, and it just sits there in the back of their classroom. You don't even have to talk to them about it. It sits there for 12 years. Mm -hmm. 12 years, our school. By the time you get out of high school, just high school here, you're willing to defend it like the flag, like the American flag, the globe. You, it's like, no, no, that's where I live. The American flag, that's where I live. The globe, that's where I live. Just mm -hmm. because you were told this. I'll, I'll give you a quick quote from... Um, uh, in fact, it was George Orwell quote, um, where he was, he wrote an article in 1946 and he was talking about the responsibility of science. He was not a flat earther, but he says, if you go to anybody on the street and you ask them how they know it's a globe, first thing they will do will always be the same thing. It's like, well, what are you talking about? We know it's a given, it's a known thing. We know we're on the globe and, you, and then you press them on it and you say, really, how do you know it's a globe? Then they start getting angry. And the reason yeah, because they don't know how to explain it. They don't know how to explain it. And and remember, this was 1946. NASA wasn't even founded until 1958. So how did everybody in 1946 know on the street that it was a globe? It's not because they knew; it's because they were told. No, no, we knew anything about scientific experiments back then. They were, but if you tell somebody enough, and you do this for enough generations, it just goes gets passed down from father to son to father to son, and so on and so on. There's no one to question it. 500 yeah. years of this. I mean, it's it was a very very strong doctrine. Anyway, go ahead. No, I understand because I also uh, yeah I've read 1984, so I understand about what everybody what you're talking about. So, but <clears throat> uh, what what about Eratosthenes? You you, you know Eratosthenes? Oh, God. Like the, the sticks and shadows are holes. 
Yeah, and you would be, by the way, one of the few people. That's there's only two arguments you can use if you throw out space, which is I usually what I'll tell people. I'll say, can you prove it without using NASA? Because and they say, why would I throw that out? I go because NASA didn't invent the globe in 1972. Yeah, and also because NASA isn't me, so I well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it was NASA. I'll just say any space agency. If it's JAXA yeah, oh, yeah, or yeah, the Europeans yeah. or whatever, there's only two arguments you have. One, of course, is the ships going over the horizon, and the other is sticks and shadows. And most people don't know the sticks and shadows argument. Sticks and shadows, yeah, good argument, unless the objects in question are very, very small and very, very close. Meaning, yeah, yeah. yeah if the sun is four hundred thousand miles wide and it's ninety-three million miles away, and you work out that math, yeah, it works out great. But it also works if it's only 3,000 miles away and it's only 50 miles wide. Mm -hmm. Same sort of light source. So at that point, you then then you, then you you are relying on the science. It's like, well, yeah, but we know it's 93 million miles away. It's like, really? How do you know that? Who, who told you that? But, and what about, like, you know, because uh, I studied, like, I started to study gravitation. Gravity. Was, like, yeah. yeah it, Tell me about gravity. gravity. But, like, the whole law of gravitation or how it is called in english i don't know but not just gravity like not the, the, the gravitational force but like you know the constant g like the big g i mean yeah and also the distance between two planets and how they all well, two just two bodies and how they interact with each other how they attract them like themselves and all this kind of stuff and uh, maybe because newton when it when he started to study like or we were told that it was newton but right. maybe someone in the 18th century started to study these facts and like just try to imagine how it could work with a sun that like is this big right and how it could attract the earth and the, like from this it all started and what can you say against like not just the gravity that we have on earth but like this whole theory that goes all around. Got it. Everything got it. Got it. Can. Well, you can't, you can't do one without the other. Meaning, remember the the whole theory of gravity had to start here first, mm -hmm. and then the equations were built on top of that. So yeah. again, I'll, I'll use Neil deGrasse Tyson because he's the guy that science keeps pushing in front of the freaking cameras. But he's not the first one to say this. Which he says, look, we can't even tell you what gravity is. We can only tell you what it does. We can only tell you its symptoms because we can't replicate it. You know, of course, you, you, you drop a pen, it falls to the floor. Of course, we, we've all seen that. Uh, the difference between that in a flat world and that in a globe are not very different at all. So if you drop something and falls to the ground, right, you would say, well, it's this magical molecular force that pulls things to the ground because of the mass of the, of the body. Yeah. And then I say, okay, let's pretend we're in a flat enclosed world. I drop the pen, it falls to the floor. I say it's a magical molecular force that just pulls things straight down because of the mass. Now, mm -hmm. if it's a simulation, it goes into a whole other thing because then we're talking about a physics engine. But let's let's throw that out for a second because most people aren't going to get what a physics engine is anyway. Yeah. So if it's a flat if it's a flat world, if it's just a snow globe sitting on a desk, then it's still the same thing. I mean, it's still just a molecular force that's pulling things straight down. The only difference in a globe is we're pulling it slightly at an angle. Maybe a, like the tiniest of angles, whereas in a flat flat world, it would pull it straight down. And if you wanted to, to use a physics engine, I suppose you could have it pull it at an angle, but most phys physics things don't don't deal with it. So, and it's for, I'm sorry, so as far as the equations, if we're talking about the universe gravity, well, come on, uh, the, Tesla, I think, said it best. And he goes, look, the problem, the problem with when you start expanding out your equations to encompass a solar system and or the universe is that it gets weaker and weaker as it gets higher because none of these people everyone everyone that builds the equations and the theories on top of another assume that whoever's below them is absolutely 100 percent right and they never double check the work going all the way to the foundation he goes because by the time you get to a certain height he goes the equations mean nothing because if the foundation is wrong then it's all wrong which comes back to when people accuse me they said are you saying that you're smarter than Einstein or Hawking or any of those guys are going no no not at all I go they're really smart guys you know heavy smart you know math guys but at the same time if the foundation is wrong the foundation is wrong it doesn't mean that they're terrible guys and they can't make a good theory it's it's that's great but if the if the if the base foundation which was done the base foundations were done by men who had no tools and or vision at all 
I mean, they just took a stab in the dark and it's like, oh yeah, let's go with that. I mean, mm-hmm. Newton, Newton, yeah, fine. Everyone knows the Newton story. Uh, but does that, did he have any way of replicating it? No, he did not. So mm-hmm. until somebody can replicate gravity using <laughs> some sort of unified field engine, no. Nah. You won't trust it. Yeah. No, no, why would I? Mm-hmm. Why would I? I mean, we're talking about the same guys that now are talking about. I mean, literally, I was in a, a National Geographic thing with a guy that spends his entire life researching dark matter. There's this, and dark matter is escape. It, it's just their way of filling in the blanks out there. There's something in the universe that's happening that's really, really wrong. They don't know what it is, and it's like, well, dark yeah. matter. That's their solution. That's their cure all to everything. Yeah, Sorry, no, I could go off on a true. rant on that one. I'm not going to though. Oh, okay. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we're talking about the curvature, yeah, the, the, the correctors with, that we, we, we do on the airplane or whether we do them or not. Right. And what about the railways? Because you know that if uh, a railway is projected, right. like from point A to point B, maybe it's like, I don't know, 2,000 mi- miles away, like point A from to, to point B. Right. So the, the engineers have to have to keep in mind the curvature of the earth to not because... not for railways because the track the track lengths are too short um unfortunately uh now waterways would be completely different like the suez canal or waterways mm-hmm. yes would absolutely have to take into account the curvature and they didn't or if you want to go back even further than that how about the roman aqueducts roman aqueducts mm-hmm. shouldn't have worked at all because the romans wouldn't even have known the curvature of the earth so how did they get the water to work? And you say, well, they adjusted it because they figured it out. It's like, eh, I don't think so. But where railways, unfortunately, the track lengths are too short. They could do micro adjustments with the railways and they would never even have to worry about it. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, could work we, we've, th- we've thought of that one already. It, it's just, there's nothing. It's, it's now if the tracks, if they were using sections of track that were very, very long. Yeah, sure. But the section, the rail, the rail, the rail things, I think, are as long as a car, or just just about as long as a car, or whatever. I can't remember exactly, but they're not long enough to make any difference. They're they're very mm-hmm. very very short. In fact, you got to remember because we're only talking about eight inches per mile. So yeah. you, like even even if you had a track length that was a mile long, which you ain't going to do because you'd never be able to transport it. It's just too much steel from one thing. That's only eight inches, and they don't even come near to that. I mean, it's it's ridiculously short. Okay. Sorry. So, okay. Uh, what about uh, another thing that is like you? You mean about the you? You, you talked about the ice walls right. at the edge of the flat Earth model. Yeah. Uh, why don't Why don't you just travel there and watch? I don't know. Maybe you tried. You uh, tried be, that. Here, okay. A couple things. One, the ice wall, and it's a, co- a common misconception. The Antarctic coastline is just the beginning of the edge meaning mm-hmm. it's going to go inland got to remember even our best our the the admiral bird story which i love so much uh he traveled he explored antarctica for the better part of 30 years most of his his yeah. adult life and with his and he flew his own planes and so if he was fly, he, if he was flying inland from the coastline for 30 years with different fuel stations and he it was all the way up until almost 1960 before he figured it out that would mean that the beginning of the, so the, the the Antarctic coastline to wherever the outer marker is would be thousands of miles. Thousands. Mm-hmm. So you're not going anywhere. Again, which is also why Antarctica was locked down. People, do, I, I, don't, I can't overstate this enough. The Antarctic Treaty is one of the weirdest documents we've ever come up with ever in our lives. First of all, it's the only treaty in the history of treaties that's never been broken. I mean, treaties were meant to be broken. That's, that's the whole point of having a treaty. It's like, okay, we'll just put this in place until somebody figures out how to beat the other guy. Uh, the treaty that's in place now says literally no economic power whatsoever can set up shop there with any corporation ever. doesn't matter if you need it. doesn't matter if you whine about it. In fact, that was the other thing. Like, let's say you set up a company. You, you all of a sudden became a king of your own country. The second you become king, you have a piece of paper put in front of you. It says, oh yeah, by the way, you can never go to Antarctica. Oh no, you can go there as a tourist. And you, if you know, if you talk to people, you might have a military force that might be down there, but corporations can never ever go down there. Why? What, why is that even, why is it a thing? There's no, there's no animal life, no plant life. The penguins don't count. 
Uh, mm -hmm. No human population, no remnants of anything. Why is Antarctica completely off limits until the treaty isn't even up for review until 2041? And even mm -hmm. then, you can guarantee they're just going to kick that can down the road. Nobody owns Antarctica in its capacity. Find me another piece of real estate anywhere in the world that is not owned. Why Antarctica? But maybe it's just too cool. I don't know. It's no, no, no. Ad Admiral Byrd, he went, on, he went on live national television here. He said, look, the place is made out of money. He goes, there's a mountain range, an entire mountain range made out of coals because could supply the entire world. There's oil, there's minerals, there's uranium. He goes, the, the, everyone's interested in this thing. And then two years later, everybody leaves the, the, the continent like it was on fire. They all left and everybody signed the treaty. Nobody even complained. It's not, again, it's not just, think of how this world is made. It's based on money and greed and power and men that are corrupted, right? And yet these same men won't even debate going down to Antarctica. It's like there are billions and billions of dollars to be had down there. Nobody wants to touch it. In fact, why there's no newspaper articles. Nobody protests. Why doesn't China protest? Why isn't why didn't the Soviet Union protest or Russia now uh, or England? People that needed the resources after World War II. Why didn't anybody want to keep want to go down there or even talk about it? It's because it's off limits. It's the outer marker, and they're not going to let corporations down there because if you let's say you own an oil company, you have planes, you have helicopters. One of your planes goes off course into an area they shouldn't, and they see something they shouldn't. Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to shut them up? Are you going to crash the plane? Are you going to shoot it down? Nah, it's not even worth it. It's, it's, find me a conspiracy that's bigger than money. Find, name name yeah. one. There is none except for this. It's actually where money makes no difference. It's like, yeah, billions, maybe a trillion dollars. Pff, who cares? Or it's not worth the hassle. So that's mm -hmm. why they did it. Sorry, my little rant. Yeah. No, but it's not. If you talk, it's not a problem. Okay. And <clears throat> what about the? Because if it's like this, yeah. If it's your way, and if you're right, then one day with this, um, how do you say it? In the, uh, yeah, global air warming, like global warming. Global warming, right? climate change. Yeah. 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 With climate change, the ice will melt because we see that it melts right now. Yeah. Like we have pictures, so we know, and also because I, I live like right now in Switzerland. When I was a when I was a, re a real little child, yeah, like I, I saw the snow like three months in a year. Now I just see the snow for one week, maybe. Yeah. So I experienced on my own that there is a climate change, right. and that you you can deny it. Right. And how will this? Because yeah, you said that it's just the beginning, these ice walls of right. the of the edge, but how will they? stay if there is climate change how, how does the ice stay out there it probably yeah, won't because it will it will melt and what will after what will be next no that's, so. that's a good point and and by the way climate change or global warming and i do believe it's global warming but they don't want to say that because uh it scares people too much because there's so many science fiction stories that are based around that which is Global warming works better in an enclosed system than it does, or it's more efficient in an enclosed system than it is a planet. Because when you say this, when you heard the term greenhouse gases, right? Well, if it's an enclosed world, then it's literally a greenhouse, and it would be yeah, it, because... it would be amplified. The excess heat wouldn't be going off into space. And you say, well, it's the cloud and the atmosphere that's keeping it in. It's like, well, unless it's actually a physical structure, in which case it's an also an automated it's a machine. So imagine it's uh, you're in a car with the air conditioning on and somebody brings in a propane lantern in the back seat. Well, that air conditioning system has to adjust for that propane lantern. You bring in another one and another one. And sooner or later, you get weird pockets of hot and cold in that stupid car because of what, what you're introducing. I mean, every we've got billions of small furnaces, also known as automobile engines, running at any given time in this world. Of course, it's going to have an effect. And the automated system is not going to be able to keep up. It's just not. Mm -hmm. It's It was meant for so only to, to handle so much of a load. And we've got, what, 7 billion people, you know, making mm -hmm. a whole bunch of people. Oh, it's not the humans. Humans aren't doing Of course they're doing it. The place is, you know, we, we're not even shy about doing it. We burn things on a, if it's yeah. not, if it's not fossil fuel, it's coal. If it's not, if it's not that, it's something else. We'd, we'd burn all the forest down if we could. So yeah, we, you're absolutely right. Will the ice stay there probably not uh it, if if it's allowed to go much longer unless whoever built this place intervenes directly 
I think eventually, yes, there's going to be some severe problems. We've already seen it. It's not just global warming. There's the climate change term was for a reason because there's wild weather everywhere. There's tornadoes where there shouldn't be. There's more hurricanes. There's more cyclones. There's weird things happening everywhere in the weather, and they're trying to downplay it as best they can, uh, but they're only going to be able to do that for so long. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I think one of the last things is just what about the vaccines? I don't know. Vaccines? You know, because, You're going to bring vaccines into this? Yeah. I guess because I thought, like, I just uh, heard that some flat earthers think that so if there is a reason to hide from us the truth, right? Like, they're going to, like, create, like, because you didn't say it, yeah, but some other people said that. They're creating stupid people that want to believe and like they believe in vaccines and in science and all this kind of stuff. And what do you think about vaccines? Like you? Okay. You know, I, well, I don't. It's good. I have, a, I have an opinion on, on vac vaccinations as much as the next guy. But mine is a little bit different in that I'm old enough that I know kind of how this whole vaccination thing came to pass. Back when I was a young, young lad, back in the day, uh, we only had like six vaccines, maybe, maybe six, not, not that many at all. Well, here's a problem, especially in America. You got to blame the Americans for a lot of the bad stuff that goes on. Most of the time we go too far when it comes to money. So if you're a pharmaceutical company, sooner or later, the word's going to get around because people talk in the industry and they say, man, if you yeah. want to make some steady money, what you really ought to do is introduce a new vaccine, right? And push it through Congress and, 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 and bribe enough government officials to get it mandatory. Because it, once it becomes mandatory, that is guaranteed money in your pocket, right? Which it seems fine. It's like, well, fine, so some extra vaccines get thrown out there. That's fine. You get you know, eight vaccines, 10 vaccines, 15 vaccines. Well, then you start running into a problem. And the problem is, and you could probably imagine what this is, is the testing meaning the interlacing testing. Because if you only have six vaccines, you're only testing one through six and all the variations of those, one through six, right? Mm -hmm. But if you have 10, the, the chessboard gets bigger. And if you have 15, and you have now you have 30, that is a lot of vaccines that you have to test against each other, not to mention uh, the eight blood types and two genders and potentially age differences. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. And let's say you get yours to market too soon before the testing is complete. Remember, that's what it's all about. It's about quarterly or it's mm -hmm. about the stock report. It's about getting your dividends. And yeah. you release a vaccine that all of a sudden you have a conflict. Vaccine number 17, which is yours, has a problem with vaccine number two. The combination of those two, <laughs> let's say in male, deadly, yeah. male children under the age of three, right? Mm -hmm. All of a sudden cause a problem. And you know this. What do you do as a corporation? There's a problem there, and that is the lawyers run the world nowadays. And the lawyer, first thing a lawyer will tell you, and I don't care if it's your country or my country, the lawyers say, until you are absolutely proven guilty, you claim innocence. You don't say anything. You never admit guilt until they have you. And, yeah. well, you got a problem, which is if this happens, well, whoever admits this, immediately there's a class action lawsuit and your company is gone. It is wiped out including your job and all your friends' jobs and everything about that. And so what do you do? You Do you tell the population? Do you cave in? No. No, you don't. Uh, and, and sorry, it's, it's, it's just how it works. That's how the business world works. The, where it gets a little more dicey is that, okay, so the autism rate has now risen in the United States anyway from 1 in 10,000 to 1 in 40. Which, yeah, is, no, I, which is yeah. ridiculous. It is an increase yeah. beyond imagination. It is it, to where yeah. every kid... Because it, I've studied this one in biology, you know, because I've, I've done a presentation about autism and how it raised, like, boom, oh, exponentially. It's doc, it's doctors, fr older doctors are, like, freaking out. They're going, look, they, they may see... Older doctors would say, look, we may have seen, like, an autism case once every five or ten years, and now it's, like, every week. Mm -hmm. There's these new autism yeah. cases. And you're saying, okay, does that prove that it's vaccinations? No, it does not. Think of it, about it from, I'll give you the easy term, the mob mentality. The mob, the crowd, they want somebody to blame, right? They, yeah. don't, they don't want studies done. They don't want this and that. They want somebody to blame and they want somebody now. So who do you blame? Well, if it's something this broad spectrum, 
there's only three things you can f you you can pick on right it's either the air <laughs> it's the water or it's the food right those yeah. are those are the three likeliest choices well you can't really pick any of those three because air is regional depending you know the air mm -hmm. at a, on a mountaintop shouldn't it's not the same as the air down in los angeles uh the water is always different for regions and food that's extremely different especially across an entire country so what else could it be what was the common thread in all these kids and social media really changed this and that is if you have a parent that says the kid was absolutely normal he goes in for a bank of vaccines that was ridiculous he gets a high fever he goes into seizures and when he comes out he's autistic and then you have parent after parent after parent saying this what do you think they're going to do that and i'm sorry there's no good this is where i'll end it on this it's sad because there's no there's not going to be any easy fix this isn't like cigarettes where all of a sudden we realized oh hey all these lung cancer things uh, it seems to be and and secondhand you know people that didn't even smoke they just lived in the same house as smokers are getting lung mm -hmm. cancer that's that's not a good thing people forget that it wasn't the smokers that sued big tobacco didn't lose because it was smokers they lost because the health insurance companies were tired of paying for lung cancer and so the mm -hmm. health insurance companies who so was big money big uh big insurance versus big tobacco yeah with the vaccines there is no champion on the autism side there is no there is no class action suit because there's no there's nobody has a vested interest no, health insurance doesn't have to pay for autism you know what I mean? It doesn't it doesn't have to do that. So until yeah, sure. a bunch of congressmen, until a bunch of politicians have their grandchildren and or children get autism and they all of a sudden start talking <laughs> to each other, nothing's nothing's going to change. And so, yeah, that's that's my I mean, again, I'm not sorry, last part. I'm not saying mm -hmm. you shouldn't vaccinate. I'm not saying that. No. But what I'm saying is if there's any indication, here's here's where it gets ugly is that we all know the most likely culprit right now is the um, MM, is the MMF vaccine. It's a triple. It's one, three in one shot. Mumps and measles and German me, mumps. German measles. German, okay. Anyway, it's like a triple. The yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's a triple in one. And everybody knows that it, because through weird experiments, you know, because parents and doctors talking to each other is like, what do we do? All they did was delay that for at least 18 months with with these kids delay that vaccine for 18 months and the the problem rate dropped a great deal you think wow wow that's great go with that right uh, you can't because if the company that made that even admits if that company that company can't even come out and say oh yeah by the way we should probably delay our vaccine for 18 months you do that class action lawsuit instantly so even they can't even say that so it's up to the parents now to make their their choice and because the the drug companies don't even want that to happen now they're they're pushing things to like where like schools will not let kids in unless they've had you know their vaccines by a certain age yeah, yeah. so sorry that's my my long version of the mm -hmm. whole vaccine thing and don't think that the big pharma is going to stop anytime soon um you remember the actor uh, robert de niro where yeah. he was going to do the um uh the he was going to do the film at his film festival premiered the documentary called Vaxxed and he was going to do it and then Big Pharma got a hold of him behind the scenes and the next thing you know I mean all they had to do is say look we will destroy your legacy all those movies you made we will put it into the ground Yeah, and it was like yeah so we're not going to be showing that film at my film festival it's like, I don't blame him I mean you know they had him so yeah no, but there you no go. one is like god yes <laughs> so but so anyway look, look it's not again and I'm, am i blaming science for this no i'm not i'm what i'm doing is i'm uh, if you want to blame anybody for the whole vaccination thing blame the lawyers because the yeah. lawyer the, the, it's, it's bigger than what's what's the line here um the lines from fight club you remember the the fight the movie fight club you ever heard of it yeah okay the fight sure. club which which was the whole premise was he was a guy that went out and looked at automobile accidents and to see if there's anything wrong with the cars and the line was if the cost of the lawsuit settlements is less than the cost of a recall we don't do a recall and that's what it is it's all about money and that is mm -hmm. if look if we can get away with paying people to just shut up and let the let our drug stay out there for as long as possible that's what we're going to do
because it, mm-hmm. even though you know there's there's people suffering for it, you know they they think it's the greater good. I don't agree, but whatever. Yeah, no, so I understand you because yeah, I also think this one that everything runs around money. So yeah. nine out nine out of every ten one... problems in the world run around money. Yeah, yeah, it's it's the biggest problem in the world. Yeah, yeah. so because yeah, I know that. I believe and I know that vaccines work because I mean the, the like the, you know maybe one year because I feel ill often right so also because I do rowing so I'm on the water with air so right. wind and <clears throat> once one year I thought uh, I took a vaccine against the flu yeah that was like maybe going to like expand that year yeah. and that year i didn't get the flu so oh again the, the vaccines are good look so, we don't have polio anymore right yeah, we, so, we but, don't have the thing that you say that they develop vaccines i think that that's that probably that's probably true because i mean why, I, if they have this like chance to get this money why don't they try why not to, try and yeah why not try to accomplish and it? even yes, they yeah. look even they didn't know at the time i mean sure the guys that developed the you know the vaccine that finally mm-hmm. kicked in the autism thing even they didn't know you know it's like all of a sudden started happening and it's like whoa 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 i mean it happens in products all the time that we make i mean there's products we do not make anymore because of stuff like this but this mm-hmm. one kind of snuck up on people and now they're in a they're in a tough tough place uh, I, 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 there's no good answer. I, I wish there was a happy, happy ending to that, but unfortunately, yeah, there, but there is no, there isn't. So there is. anyway, uh, no. Okay. So it's, it's, I regret it, but my time comes to end like in, I think two, three minutes. Okay. I have to go because also I have to study a bit. Yeah. You got <laughs> to study. So yeah, but no, Mark. Thanks you for your, thank you for your time because yeah. It's oh, really happy, great happy to do it, man. Uh, I will again. I'll I'll drop you the audio file, and if you need anything else or any other resources, or if you want to talk to anybody, uh, okay. If, so, if anybody that that caught your eye, uh, be more than happy to introduce you. Mm-hmm. No, so maybe in the future I'll speak with you again because you know even if I don't trust in this theory. I get more informed in the, the whole thing. Sure. So I try to like convince, not, not convince myself, but to prove things because like to like, yeah, to experience and to prove, like to get my own view of the whole thing. Right. So yeah, I think that's the greatest part of you is that you motivate people to inform themselves. I try. Hey, again, don't so, don't take my word for it. Uh, do your own research, ask questions, and figure it out for yourself. Yeah, and that's that's the greatest part. So, no, I thank you for your time and our, and our time, and yeah, no, thank you, Mark. Maybe we'll have another talk. Sure. I know, in the future. Sure. So, Let me know. Yeah, no, no, thank you, thank you really, really, really much. Okay, hey, you have a good so, rest of your, uh, wait, what time is it over there? Oh, it's 9 p.m. Yeah, you get you to study and then go to bed. Yeah, right. so maybe I'm going to study like for an hour and then <laughs> go to bed, like just mess, some mess. Because right. I have like, you know, the math tests, the math, how do you say it? Math, 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 math. math. Or, or maths, it's fine, <laughs> either way, it'll work. <laughs> No, yeah. Thank you, Mark. Okay. So, yeah, I'm waiting for your file. Ah, where do you go? Where, where, on what are you going to drop me the audio file? Oh, I'm just going to drop it right here. There. Right. I'll, I'll just drop okay, it. I'll, right once I once I close this, it'll it'll compile, and then I'll just drop it in the chat box. Okay. Okay. No, yeah. So thank you another time, and hell yeah, have a nice day. All right. You so, too. Because you know, 2 p.m. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got plenty. I may so, even actually go out in the sun right now. Okay. No. Okay. So Mark. Bye bye and uh, good luck right. with your mission. Thank you, man. See ya. Bye bye.